Hey there everyone and welcome to another Tower Heroes video. Continuing the level guides, this is chapter 3, levels 6 to 10. So first up we're looking at the setup for level 6. So this is the final setup I'd recommend going for. We're looking at low level heroes throughout all of these uh, levels because it is very much possible to beat them uh, with low level heroes. I'd say 310 is actually kind of the, the tipping point where it starts getting a little harder and you start needing some of the stronger heroes to uh, to get through things. But anyway, this is the setup I go for. Um, as you can see at the front of the... Basically, the, the enemies are going through to the top. They're coming in from four different sides, but they're going channeling in through that top through two columns. So you can defend these two columns and pack your heroes around that point to be able to uh, protect it very well. I don't think there's much more you can do that would be a better strategy than this. So at the front there on either side you have two defenders uh, so I went with Hale and Velka um, they are water enemies so um, Felwyn isn't as strong and then behind them are two melee heroes that are going to be attacking through and then it's basically one healer in there should protect them and then a couple of um, range attackers you know Silver and Kanos to just deal a bit more damage over that area everyone aiming in towards the center bit um, you know the healers and the range attackers from the outside to kill them off in that area so let's go and look at it actually, you know, how the level pans out and what to do. There's the heroes I'm using. As you can see, they're all Evo 1, just leveled up to the max level of Evo 1. Uh, so really not much progression on them. So we start off with Remus on the left-hand side. Uh, he's going to defend that from those, uh, those enemies coming in. Remus only blocks one enemy, so you do need additional support there. Um, so Silver I put down next to just do a bit more extra damage uh, to kill off those enemies and it, it just about does the job. Uh, you could instead go with a different hero to Remus if you have if your Remus doesn't actually kill off those enemies easily enough. Um, but on the right hand side you have enough time because I only did Remus and Silver which are very cheap to deploy. Uh, I can put down both the defender and melee attack on the right hand side which as you can see did a great job there and then you have enough CP to play um, to put down a defender on the left hand side too. So now with the healer there it's set up. Like, we're only halfway through this battle, we've got the setup there, the enemies will now just basically get killed off as they come in. Um, as you can see, there's quite large groups of them at some points, um, so you do definitely need those defenders there to, to block them off. Um, there's also, as you can see on this right-hand side that's coming in now, um, one of these sort of range attacker things. Uh, those guys can be quite nasty. Um, so if you do space your heroes out over the map, those guys can take down any, like, you know, random range heroes that are actually quite squishy that you've placed around the map, uh, they can be killed off by those quite nastily. So it does pay off to have everyone in one block at this point with defenders at the front and a healer to keep everyone alive. So now we get the big enemies coming in, the final wave um, of those uh, those big tanky ones, and that's that level. So pretty easy. Uh, we'll see some slightly tougher ones coming up uh, very shortly. So now we move to 3-7. This is a very different kind of map. There are three horizontal rows which the enemies walk along, and basically you've got to cover these three rows. So what I think is crucial in these kind of levels is using melee attackers and facing them up and down so they cover multiple rows. So you can see what I've got is I've got a defender in the middle, and then I've got either side two melee attackers facing inwards. So that means the, the middle row is covered very well, and then it's just a case of covering the, the bottom row and the top row uh, with... Uh, either a melee attacker or a range attacker, as I've got here. Pack in a couple of healers and you're good to go. That's basically the setup for this level, so we can have a look at um, how it actually pans out. So if you may be wondering why Remus was there, if the middle row was covered so well already, and that is because Remus gets placed first. So, when I do place him, there we go. Remus in the middle, and then uh, on the bottom row is where enemies will come next, so I'm going to place Victoria at the bottom facing upwards, you know, preparing for the future. So she's going to cover both the bottom and the middle. And then Edwin at the top, facing down. And then we can go in with uh, either, like, Silver at the top or Felwyn, um, you know, basically just adding in a bit of additional support. Um, both Edwin and Victoria block two, so they are pretty much sorted there. Uh, it's just a case of getting some extra damage in. And you can see their health is dropping a bit, so you want to put healers in probably at this point. Um, so I put Syrian down at the top. He doesn't quite heal the bottom, so Victoria's health is dropping, but then the healer comes in and uh, saves the day. So now we've got the setup, it's pretty much going to be fine from here. Um, there are only small groups of enemies that come at any one time. 
Uh, these enemies are a little stronger that are coming in now. So uh, you do want to have the setup done by this point. But, you know, as you can see, we can have the setup easily done by this point. So it's not too much of a challenge. These next enemies, these can also be a bit nasty. Um, not so much in this map, but on some other maps they can be quite horrible. Uh, attacking enemies from, like, attacking your heroes from a distance and doing quite good damage. If they haven't got a healer going on, then uh, they can be killed off quite uh, quite easily. But in this map, you can put in a couple of healers very well and, you know, support everyone very nicely. Now level 3-8, this is basically an advancement of the previous level uh, where it's actually made a bit trickier because now there are four rows rather than three. And as you can see, you get groups of enemies coming in like two at a time. So um, a melee hero who only blocks one enemy won't do a good job. You need to be able to block two or more. So I've gone with a very similar technique and I think this is the trick to it of um, placing melee attackers who face each other. So on the bottom you can see two melee attackers facing each other. They're each going to cover each other as well as their own row. And um, then at the top you've also got the two healing pads so you can put melee attackers down on them and then it means that you don't need a healer at the top, you only need a healer at the bottom. And in fact what I've done is I've aligned the healer at the bottom, it's a single target healer that does an additional square so it will also cover the defender up there. The defender, Velka, I've got her there because as I said, you need heroes who block two or more hit, uh, enemies, and Remus only blocks one. So having the defender at that point is a great, um, you know, a great setup. And then I've got Silver at the top just to help support Victoria with a bit of damage because she doesn't have any melee hero helping her. It's just herself, so Silver will do that, and she's also going to cover, you know, some of the extra rows too. Uh, so let's go in and have a look at the battle itself and how to set that up. So as you can see, my heroes as normal, you know, there's, we're still low level at this point, um, should be fine. It's just a case of knowing the technique, really, uh, for doing the levels. So start off with Victoria there, because enemies coming in on the top. Um, I believe they come in the next row down. Yeah, they do. So then you put in Remus. And that's why we don't, haven't got the Defender quite yet, because uh, a little tight on CP and want to be able to build up some CP, um, you know. It's just efficient to do that, put out your CP generators first and then rely on them for a bit. On these healing pads they're going to stay alive very nicely, so we don't need uh, anything else going on yet. And in fact, Victoria is going to support Remus so that, um, you know, if there were multiple enemies coming in or whatever, she'd be able to help take them down, so he only has to block one at a time. So yeah, it was after that, it was put the melee attackers down at the bottom, so they're going to cover those two rows and then put in the healer to support them. And then it's just a case of, you know, a couple of extra top-up damage bits before then the defender. And there we will, we will set. So this actually only took about a third of the battle to set up the heroes. Um, and it's going to be fine from here. <laughs> the enemies just come in little groups mainly. Um, there's nothing too scary that really happens. It's just a case of waves of, you know, one or two enemies at a time. It's, you know, it's a, it's a level that tests can you protect many different rows in one go. Um, and yeah, we can do that by using melee attackers to face each other, um, so they're going to uh, defend both rows at once. Uh, it really improves the improves the damage output when there's, you know, say a tougher enemy in one row and a, and a weaker enemy in another one, they'll take out the weak one very quickly and then both work together to take down the tougher one. So this last, uh, sorry, not last, wave but uh, one of the last waves has these um, sort of range attacking enemies they're pretty nasty you can see silver nearly dies at the top if she does die it doesn't matter too much uh, because Victoria can block two enemies here at the end so that's uh, 3 8 3 9 and 3 10 really test uh, your range attacker heroes so at this point silver and Kanos won't do the job alone you need to have other range attackers um, preferably fire or nature uh, to get through these um, it will be challenging otherwise, and as you can see with this setup, I've got Sagus in the top left. So what we've got in this battle is um, two points from the left, where um, I think I'm doing it the wrong way because it's probably mirrored. But yeah, two points on the left with the Drake things that are going to come out. They're going to fly across the map, um, so you need to cover both the top and the bottom for that. And then we've got melee heroes that come through one path along there. So for the melee heroes, there aren't many of them, they're not too much of a problem, just Victoria down there is going to do the job, and I've got a healer there to um, you know, help Victoria stay alive, and then it's a case of, um, I've put Silver and Kanos to cover the, the bottom row of the, the Drake things coming across, and Sagus at the top. 
Uh, he's on that range pad thing, which means he just decimates those uh, those enemies. He'll one-shot them all, I think, uh, when he's on that. And then there's a couple of healers to protect things. So let's go in with the battle itself um, and have a look at how it all pans out. I refuse to use Balfagor on this. Uh, Balfagor is, is obviously a huge upgrade. Uh, I think the next level as well has nature enemies, so Balfagor is amazing there. So if you have that, use it. Otherwise, Sagus does the job. And as you can see, he's going to one-shot these enemies there. So Sagus at the beginning... He's also going to help uh, give you some extra CP because um, he he does that as he kills enemies. And then putting on Silver on that range pad, facing down, so she covers the bottom very nicely. If she just faced across, she wouldn't be hitting these enemies properly. And then Kanos can face left uh, because in that position he can attack them all. So together they'll cover all those range enemies very easily. And as you can see, Victoria can you know take out those uh, those ground enemies. Struggle with my words in some of these. Uh, yeah, so that's going to cover pretty much every angle, and it's quite easy to do from here. Uh, yeah, you need to have the range attack heroes that can do the job, but if you have them, then this is just a case of um, placing them in the right positions, making sure you've got the healers to support them, because these, uh, these enemies that are coming through now, they can do very nasty damage. Uh, you didn't really get to see it properly, because Sagus was getting healed while he's being attacked, but... Multiple waves of these will take down your range attackers if they're not supported by healers. Or they're not like a beast like Sagus who just, uh, you know, doesn't take any extra damage, just tanks it. So I refuse to use Sagus's skills. Uh, you'll see that in a bunch of these battles, I kind of don't use the skills on, on heroes much. And that's because I don't want to... I want to show kind of not using the skills, you know, base level as much as possible. Uh, for how to get through these battles. So that was 3.9, let's move on to 3.10. 3.10 is the same map, but now it's going to be harder. So the bottom row is where groups of enemies come along, and that is why I've now switched Silver and Sagus. Also, there are none, uh, there are no of the, there are no pads where you can put range attack heroes and they'll do extra damage to range enemies. So you've got to you know, have a bit more power in your heroes. Um, so Sagus at the bottom there is going to cover the groups of enemies that come in better. I've also put Kanos there, covering the bottom row pretty much. Um, he's also going to help with the top row a bit, because you can see on the left, there's actually four bits which the enemies will come through. So it's not just going to be two rows you're covering, it's now kind of spread across the map. So I've spread these range attackers across the map with Silver at the top, Kanos in the middle, and Sagus at the bottom, and that seems to work the best. So then I've got... Um, I've actually got two melee attackers here uh, now, rather than one. I don't actually know the exact reason why, but yeah, basically, <laughs> you know, you need the fire range, uh, fire melee attackers in to cover the, the ground enemies, and then a couple of healers to support those uh, range attackers, and that will do the job. So let's move into the battle itself, so you can see what's going on. Like the previous battle, Balfour Gore does a really well on this map. I tried to see if I could do it without Balfagor. It's possible without Balfagor. I'm using Sagus instead. Uh, if you have Balfagor, definitely use him. So at the top, you'll see these enemies are reasonably well spread out. So Silver can just about take them down. Um, I can't remember if Silver has Might equipment on her, whether she's, you know, equipped up at all. But basically, Silver will do the job fine. And because uh, those... Yeah, she attacks quickly enough that she can take down those enemies. Um, so... While that's all going on, you have enough time to put down Sagus and Kanos, and they're going to cover these bottom rows. And you'll see now, as some range attackers, sorry, range enemies come through, there's like three there in a row. Silver would not be able to cover that well enough. Um, Silver and Kanos, I'm not sure if they will well enough, uh, because they're quite spaced out. You can't have both Silver and Kanos covering, you know, all the rows well enough. Um, so Sagus does a much better job of that, and you can have him over there on the right. Uh, to cover both those both those two bottom row bits. So, um, ah yes, this is why I think I placed down um, Victoria at the top there, because she soaks up the damage from that range enemy that comes through. So rather than attacking Kanos, who doesn't have a healer on him, uh, it will instead hit Victoria, who does have a healer on her. And here again, you know, we've got a couple of those enemies which uh, they're just going to get soaked up by the healer, um, and, yeah, the healer Umara can, can heal through it. So, yeah, a little tougher than the last level. Uh, definitely very possible, though. Uh, when I originally played the game, 
within 24 hours I was able to get up to and beat this level, so I hope it's not too tricky for anyone. But I did want to cover chapter 3 just because, um, you know, you've got to start somewhere and assuming that everyone's done this point is uh, a little bit much because I know some of the earlier levels on chapter 3 can be a bit tricky for some people. So, yeah, this is it. The end of this, le uh, the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed watching this and it helped you out and I'll see you in a video soon.